Good morning! Good morning to all my wonderful, lovely Dawnbreakers out there. Or at least the Dawnbreaker support squad. Uh, I don't know. What should I call you guys? Do you have a name? Besides the names of the individuals that I know, like, you know, Strudel and Haggis and... That's not actually his name here, but I know them. Uh, welcome back to the channel! Welcome back to a channel update. This one has been a while in the making. Between having wildfires in the distance and thus having my voice be an absolute nasally mess, which it still is, kind of, a little bit, and also life changes happening in the background, I've not had time or the voice to record one of these. Uh, but, uh, but here we are. It's actually first thing in the morning for me. It may not be first thing in the morning for you when you're seeing this, but it's first thing in the morning for me. So if you hear like clinky sounds a little bit, that would be my ring hitting my coffee mug. And also I have the window open because it's early and the air is not blistering, which is nice. Uh, the background footage that we are seeing today should be footage of my... <laughs> My main protagonist from a completely unrelated venture, Esper Ravenwood, as I'm playing him in Skyrim. He's actually from the Tales of Esper Ravenwood and also the Raven Friends saga, which is his prequels, which I'm in the midst of writing. Uh, links in the doobly-doo, because why not? It's been a little bit bizarre trying to, trying to translate some of his skills that he has in his own book world into Skyrim. But I'm not going to talk about that here. I've actually done this for a revisit of a character crusade on Bound Challenge. Uh, I did this for Season 2. Well, I, I did this for my revisit of Season 2, Ghosts of Yore. And it, it's by far my favorite season because of the strange and interesting narrative. I will probably be playing through my decision today. I'm not actually sure what the footage will be of. So... I have been on massive hiatus, as you may have noticed. Uh, hiatus started at the end of the first week of July after the finale week for the Dawnbreaker saga. Uh, I intended to have an episode of Book of Shadows up between here and between then and now, but the air in here has not exactly been conducive to running a computer whilst um, rendering a video. It has been stupendously hot, which means I'm kind of actually glad that I decided to take a hiatus in the month of July, because July is warm. I think August is probably going to be warmer, but we'll see. Hopefully it doesn't do that. This is the other difficulty that I've been facing. A lot of schedules have been flipped around in terms of work and life, and I have not had very much recording time. So for the sake of actually getting a, uh, a backlog up again, so that I have, I have a couple of episodes scheduled out into the future, um, the hiatus will probably continue into August, but yeah, I definitely wanted to make this so that it, we had something. I also do have an episode of the Book of Shadows. The Book of Shadows? I have an episode of Book of Shadows waiting to be edited. But again, I haven't done it because rendering in hot weather is bad times, especially on the third floor of an apartment that has a swamp cooler and not actual AC. It's fun. Oh gosh, the other thing that I've been trying to deal with was that um, I accidentally updated Skyrim once, and I think I ma and then I managed to break it a second time, and I'm still kind of trying to make sure all of the pieces are back where they're supposed to be. I haven't really done much switching around of profiles because I've just been playing Esper. Um, I know that more good's profile works, and I know that because I've played the episode that will go up soon, hopefully. Um, so I know her profile works. I'm pretty sure Ingrath's profile still works because he's the one that I've been kind of. S stupidly, Ingrath's profile is the one I've been testing things on, namely the actual Dawnbreakers NPCs. I had been trying, trying, trying to get them to be custom voiced NPCs, but until I figure out how to actually bundle up all of the dialogue in such a way that it works, and also bundle up, like, 
program said dialogue in a way that doesn't tinker with the generic dialogue of all of the other NPCs. Until I figure that out, they're just gonna be- they're just gonna have default voices. I'm gonna try to get them as- as close to their actual voices as I possibly can. It might be a little bit weird. I'm still trying to decide if Kinua is going to have the female commander voice or the young eager voice, because if I give her that one, she will have the same voice as Zay Test, whose voice I have decided on. So... I've, I did a poll over on Patreon to see if my patrons at least would be bothered by it. It's not exactly a very large sample, <laughs> but it seems that the general consensus is, especially if you guys came from Couch Warriors channel, in which case, hi, uh, yeah, thank, always, always the thanks go out to Mr. Couch Warrior for, uh, for doing something that I hadn't, I didn't realize that he did, but he links my channel in his description, and I am blown away by this. I don't know, I don't know if he's put it there when we started doing the Theral and Mord good talking to each other thing, or if it's just there, like, and he forgot about it and hasn't taken that out yet, or if it's still there on purpose, but either way, thanks go out to the couch. Always. Oh yeah, uh, but especially those of you who have come from Couch Warriors videos or are familiar with them, um, recently in his live streams, he has had his NPCs voiced by just the, some of the vanilla Skyrim options. I know that at least one of mine is going to be very, very strange. It, it's going to be weird to hear Ingrath with the default elven dialogue, but... And I know I could probably give them any voice that I wanted because of amazing follower tweets. And I really hope that Ingrath doesn't end up with some of the Thalmor voice lines because I'm gonna give him the elf voice. But... Yeah, we. I. I did. I did establish that it wouldn't be terribly out of character for him to slip back into that accent, um, just a little bit. So yeah, the NPCs are going to have vanilla follower voices rather than my lovely voice. I say lovely as it just dissolves into badness as we speak. The, this, what's happening to me right now, is the reason that I decided that Ingrath has smoke damage or or fire damage in his vocal cords because boy we get a little bit of smoke in the atmosphere around here and, and my voice just it it turns into badness so his voice is also made of badness oh and i also keep trying to figure out how to do a recap for the story so far and i just haven't found a decent way to do it yet I, the problem is I probably just need to sit down and script something, but I want to do it in a way that isn't just me telling you what has happened. I liked the Thalmor report thing that I did, excuse me, for the Act 1 recap. I like that a lot, and I want to do another one. The problem is nothing has really happened that the Thalmor would be aware of, aside from the College of Winterhold. So, everything else, all the stuff in Falskar, all the stuff that Kinoa is doing, she hasn't really been doing anything. They wouldn't really be interested in that, and Ingrath has been pretty elusive. I don't have a reason to do a recap from their point of view right now. I've toyed around with the idea of, for instance, uh, each of them sending messages back to people that, um, that they care about. Like, Arden sending a letter to one of his college friends, <laughs> the specific one I will not say for reasons. Um, Yarnvina sending a letter back to her daughter, and then Ingrath doesn't really have somebody that he can send a letter to except maybe Dominique, but they talk in person, so it's why would he do that? So that that idea kind of fell through pretty quickly. Uh, so that's why we haven't had a, ch a, a, a story recap yet. I'm still trying to figure out if, if or how I want to do that, or if I want to save it for a little bit farther down the line when we have more things happening that the Thalmor would actually be aware of. So yeah, uh, going forward, out of the hiatus, I will be doing the uh, different thumbnails for each video thing because it's it does make it a lot easier to navigate.
actually. Or I need to make the numbers bigger, but in order to do that I would kind of have to do something special and funky with the thumbnails, which I, I don't know what or how or if I would do it, so I'll just do different ones. Um, the other thing I will be doing is changing the actual upload schedule, both because of act like trying to record around work and other people, um, and also because I kind of... Having the schedule where it was three videos a week, even though they were short, it was taking up a lot of time, and I want to get back to some of the other projects that I work on in the background. For instance, I am a writer. I haven't written uh, anything new or published anything new since I started the Dawnbreakers saga. I don't think. I think Oceanson came out before I started the Dawnbreakers saga, but I'm not sure. Oh, uh, maybe I- maybe that isn't true. But <laughs> the point is I, I'm working on all sorts of other things as well as this, and I want to get back to some of those projects. I want to give myself, my brain, time to just sit every once in a while and, like, play Minecraft. Rather than Skyrim, just just to reset everything, de-stress from work, it it's been it's been kind of a roller coaster the last couple of months in my personal life. I'm not gonna get into it, but I've toyed around with the idea of making videos that are like the things that I'm struggling with in terms of book stuff. Maybe not struggling with, but just book stuff videos every once in a while, just like. And here is how I reverse engineered Omnia from, like, the, the little scraps that we collectively came up with in a D&D campaign. Here's how I built a world around a couple of ideas. I think on this channel, character building would probably be more appropriate, a topic to talk about rather than world building, but I, I am also a world builder, so I, I don't know. I'll, I'll keep thinking about that, but... Y'all are here for the Dawnbreakers, and I am aware of this, so, yeah. Book of Shadows will continue to be on a as-I-remember-to-do-it basis. I like having the freedom to just play Mordgood and advance her story as I need to, especially because I can kind of figure out... Now that I know where everyone else is, I can kind of figure out where her story is right at the moment. Um, chronologically, she is actually doing all her stuff currently, right now. Uh, she's right smack in the middle of a time gap in the Dawnbreakers saga, and that time gap goes from basically from the end of Intonation's finale to the beginning of the Dawnbreakers as a thing, collectively. So the beginning of episode- not even the beginning of episode one, because it begins and then the time gap happens, and it will be pretty obvious because I will put a lot of, like, little time-lapse bits in there. And also, Arden's whole thing happened before anyone else has happened by a couple of days. So... But yeah, there's a time gap of about a week. So I'm, I'm giving time for all of this to resettle, get the characters where I want them to be, where I need them to be, and then we'll just continue from there. But yeah, that's that's where we'll be when we come back from the hiatus. Schedule changes. I will be I will be um dropping the frequency of videos down to probably one a week, but they are going to be longer episodes partially to just be able to be in character a lot longer and have that time count for a longer stretch of time. That makes sense. Like, before I could play for an hour, and or, or, yeah, I could play for an hour and that would give me a week's worth of footage. Now I can play for an hour and that might give me two weeks worth of footage. Or it'll give me a week here and then a week a little while down the line when we come back to that character. It's, it's gonna be interesting trying to keep all the storylines straight, but since all of the- the reason I'm- I should have pointed this out sooner, but the reason I'm going to be conglomerating all of them into the same- story rather than the separate like intonation honorless their own separate stories are all coming together right at the moment and they're going to be interacting with each other a lot more so it makes more sense to me to uh just squish them all into the same thing and have that do as it does that makes sense okay so enough about that <laughs> I definitely want to do a Q&A for this video. It, it, we don't have nearly as many questions in this video as I did in the last Q&A. 
partially because it hasn't been that long, and partially because a couple of my answers here I have written out, I made notes about what I want to say, and I'm going to be very long-winded, I can feel it. So, without further ado, let's get into the Q&A. Um, question number one, right off, is the Dawnbreaker saga over? Because I did the whole finale thing. No, the Dawnbreaker saga is far from over, I just needed a break, as we've discussed. Question number two, why does Ingrath suddenly sound like Ancano? Um, for those of you who haven't heard my impression of Ancano, my, my, my Thalmor voice, I do backstory vignettes over on Patreon. A couple of those have had to do with Arden and Ancano before all of the stuff happened, um, back in their College of Whispers days. And Ingrath used to be a Thalmor, which is why he suddenly sounds like a... I, I, I don't know if I've mentioned that on camera before. On camera? It, in my videos, other than Dominique joking about how sometimes he starts to sound like a Thalmor, and him kind of going, yeah, 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 we know, just shut up about it, I don't want to talk about it, that kind of thing. Except that in his finale, we, those of you who have seen his, his finale, that happened. Long story short, he does tend to slide back into the Thalmor accent occasionally, but yeah, I've mentioned it in his backstories. Ingrath has a lot of backstory, which is why he's got a lot of stories. Okay, but yeah, that's why Ingrath suddenly started to sound like Ancano a little bit. <laughs> and I am slowly starting to sound more and more like Ingrath as I'm talking. <laughs> My voice is just descending into the pits. Uh, oh well. Question three, what do those in end screen cards mean? The new end screen cards at the end of, uh at the end of the finales. Um, I have started doing those so that I have a way to kind of indicate that there have been two- I mean, I don't really know why I decided to indicate this in the end screen of all things, but indicate that there have been two main characters in the same video. I, I made the cards for them because I figured it would be easier to do two cards next to each other rather than try to make a split screen of the big wallpaper sized art that I've done of these characters and also I wanted to I wanted to kind of throw out an homage to Dragon Age Inquisition which is I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite games to play but the art is absolutely like my favorite art from any game that I've ever played or looked at. But if you're interested in, in knowing what the imagery and symbolism means for those cards rather than why I've just decided to use them suddenly, I'm a I actually did a series of imagery breakdowns over on Patreon. If you want to go check it out, the Patreon will be linked in the description. I did try to keep them as spoiler free as possible because some of the cards have very, very lore specific symbols in them and they have they have they have kind of wild implications for the story going forward and I didn't want to do anything terribly spoilery in that regard. So question number four how do you keep track of so many characters and storylines? Um I actually have a Scrivener file where I keep track of everything, no matter and, and I mean everything, no matter how plot relevant it may or may not be. It I actually wrote this down. In all I have eight folders, one for each character, uh, one for research, one for things like plotting and date tracking so that I can keep track of what days, on what days, who is where, basically. So that I know that like, that, that exact, that exact method, like keeping track of who is where, is the reason that I left in the clip of Zaytest getting absolutely mauled by werewolves because I looked at my- like I ha it happened. I turned the camera off, sat back for a couple seconds going, Alright, what am I gonna do with this? And then I looked at my date tracker and went, wait just a cotton picking second. Kinoa is on her way south right now. So that's how that happened. So that's probably the most useful part of everything that I keep track of. I have scripts for things in this file that will not actually be read until I anticipate a year from now. <laughs> Maybe two years at the rate that I'm going to be going. It's gonna take a while. 
We'll put it that way. It's going to be interesting. But yeah, that's how I keep track of everything. I make sure that I note who's doing what, where, when. I also have character profiles for everyone that go way more in detail than I will ever use. I have their, their journals in this folder. I have the dossiers in this folder. <laughs> I have some- I have an inter-character relation page so that I can keep track of how they kind of think about each other and how they will relate to each other when they meet. Who gets along immediately, who probably won't get along at all until much farther down the line. If you're thinking Arden and Yarnvita, you are exactly right. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I do intend to have everyone meet eventually. Is that, a, is that a question that I'm going to answer down the line? Yes, actually, it, it is. It's actually the next question, so let's just move on to that. Question, what is this? Five. How do you intend to have all of your characters meet up, and if you were, if you were to pick one main character, who would it be? I, I do intend to have all of them meet up eventually. We'll just throw that out there. And I mean all of them, including Mordgood. If you... Uh, could you imagine? Just Just imagine this for a second. Mordgood and Arden going on an adventure together. I don't know what it will be, if it will be, but just all of the sass <laughs> contained between the two of them and me trying to flip back and forth between those two accents, which are very hard to flip back and forth between, by the way. But yeah, I, I do eventually intend to get all of them together. I have a script. This is the script that I was talking about where it may not be read for another two years. But I do have a situation in which all of the Dawnbreakers, except Dominique, because I'm not sure if she counts, and she's also kind of the... If this were like a heist show, like Ocean's Eleven or something, she would be the... or, or like Leverage is a better example, I would say. She's the mastermind in the background who just kind of figures things out in the shadows and then just relates the information to people rather than actually being part of the field team, shall we say. It may be that we get to that point and I need to bring her in for some reason, but so far that script is just, um, Kinoa, Ingrath, Zaytest, Yarnvita, Arden, and Mordgood. All in the same room, which I have tested that I can actually get that many characters into the same room under my control at the same time. It gets a little squirrely. It's uh, gonna be a challenge. We'll say that. Is that. If you've seen or listened to the OST, there is one spot, um, the, 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 the screenshot that I've used for the song Dawnbreaker, I have all of them in the same shot. That took me an hour to get that one shot because they kept moving around and being silly and uh, just wandering off randomly and I'm like, oh gosh, what's going on? So hopefully nothing breaks by the time that we get there. We're going to have a massive confluence of characters eventually and even in the first few episodes of the Dawnbreaker saga proper, we're gonna have a lot of characters meeting for the first time. Uh, I'm not gonna say who um, and then some of the characters already know each other, like Kinoa and Zaytest, whom I forgot knew each other, but they know each other. Uh, Ingrath knows, I think, everybody, except that he and Yarnvita have never actually met face to face on her end, so that's a thing. And then Mordgood is just sort of off doing her own thing, and she and Yarnvita are the only two that actually know each other. Now that I think about it, I don't know if they've ever actually met face to face. And then the other part of that question, if I could pick any main character, who would it be? Honestly, I could pick any of them, but that would sort of defeat the purpose of having a multi-character saga to begin with. My idea for this was partially inspired by, well, I say partially, but massively, I should say, inspired by the five fables and the old olden days character crusade idea of the Skyrim epicosity project where you just get a whole bunch of get a whole bunch of characters and do all of the quests and then bring them together and they all like help the dragonborn defeat Alduin and save the world and all that jazz just so that it you don't have the one character doing everything which for some people that makes sense i had a character crusade unbound character that i had intended to do a little bit of everything and that was hegatha the thalmor and the idea was cause as much confusion within all of the places as possible 
so Discord, all that jazz, because Salmor. But like, Kinoa is the kind of character who I could never see her doing the Thieves Guild, for instance. Ingrath is the type of character who I could never see doing the Companions. Actually, if I think about that one, I could, but only under a very certain set of circumstances. Arden, I couldn't see him doing the Dark Brotherhood, or well... I have to think about that one, because if, if he went down a very dark path, I could see him doing the Dark Brotherhood, but he would be really bad at it, okay? So yeah, all of these characters I designed... I, I didn't really- I partially designed them and they partially designed themselves, but I- they- they're all supposed to do it- be doing their own thing, being their own people, and then they come together to form a team. Just like Couch has done. And like, I- I definitely- <laughs> I definitely feel like there are probably people out there going, You just ripped off Couch! Why- why are you doing this? And the answer is, I started doing this back when he was doing- or- or- did I start doing this back with Etienne, or did I start doing this while he was doing Twist? I can't remember. Couch is telling his- he's almost done, actually, at the time of, of recording this. He's telling his own stories with his own characters, I'm telling my own stories with my own characters. We're both going about this in completely different ways, even though we've started from this kernel of, okay, make a bunch of characters to do different things, and then have them all meet eventually, or not. That's... It, it's more interesting to me that we started with the same idea. We, we've taken it and adapted it in our own ways, and... And even Walking from the Light, which is Strudel's... 57 Strudel, if you've seen her around my comments, I will also link her stuff in the description. But she has established this cast of characters, some of whom are NPCs that she has taken and just... Roggy... Freaking not beard. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Just Roggy freaking not beard. I guess this this question, this answer kind of turned into a disclaimer. I did not mean to rip off Couch Warrior. I am not intending to rip off Couch Warrior. I am in fact not ripping off Couch Warrior. We're both doing our own thing. The fact that he actively encouraged people to take this concept and do what they wanted with it back in the old character crusade days. Th th just take that with you, okay? But yeah, picking one of my characters to be the main character uh, is something that I cannot do. Um, they all have a purpose, even though, like, for instance, Yarnvita has spent the last chapter in Falskar and Kinoa is currently on a weird, like, vision pilgrimage thing. That was sort of partial- in some ways driven by just circumstance and in some ways driven by me trying to get them out of the way a little bit to let other stories have a bit more spotlight because they were more dramatically interesting and important, I would say. Like, the build-up to the end of the College of Winterhold. Like, that was... It's not necessarily a climax in Arden's story as much as it is the beginning of the rest of his story, which is going to... Like, this is not going to sit well with him, and it's going to inform a lot of the decisions he makes from here on out. Same with Zaytest and the Thieves' Guild and the Dark Brotherhood, and Ingrath with Zaytest and the Dark Brotherhood, and all of the other things that he's doing. So their storylines were kind of in the forefront. Yarnvina and Kinwa will have their time in the spotlight as well. Kinwa's might take a while, because she is the Dragonborn, the world turns around the last dragonborn, so I suppose I could I could pick her if I wanted to, but I could also pick Ingrath, b since he's the one who knows everybody. I could pick Arden because he has, I would say, the most dramatically and emotionally interesting story right now. I could pick Yarnvita because she's the oldest and probably the wisest. Maybe. Maybe not. She's, she's certainly the strongest. I could pick Zaytest because she's the funniest. Hey, there's... Well, to me anyway. <laughs> and then Morgan, who is off doing her own thing. But she is going to be a catalyst for things. Morgan is. But yeah, all of them are important. They'll all shine at their own... Uh, at their own hour, I will say. It just might not be for a little while because of plot reasons, and I want to give everyone their space. Um, I would say... Probably Ingrath is going to be sinking into the background a little bit going forward. Not a lot, 
because he, he his story and another character's will be very closely entwined going forward. I'm not going to say which, obviously, because that would defeat the purpose of not being spoilers. But yeah, really what I'm trying to do with the Dawnbreaker saga is tell the story of the people in Skyrim who have had the courage and passion and audacity and the whatnot to actually do something about the state of affairs in Tamriel. I could have I could have done what Strudel does and taken a random NPC or a not so random NPC and said, okay, what's this guy's deal? Let's play this character for a while. But I didn't. And Ingrath was a test character, by the way. He started out as a test character and then this happened. Just wanted to point like throw that out there. All of all of these characters, they have a purpose. I can't pick one to be the main character because they all have a purpose. They are all either ordinary people in an extraordinary situation or have been through extraordinary situations and come out the other side an extraordinary person. Or extraordinary people in situations that they are entirely not prepared to deal with. I'm just, I'm telling the story of people who are doing things that are very out of the ordinary. I'm not necessarily telling the story of a bunch of heroes, even though that's definitely how it's going to be. I'm very influenced by the fact that I used to, and hopefully will again in the future, play Dungeons and & Dragons and Pathfinder, so you know, that's a thing. But yeah, they're all just still people at the end of the day. Even Ingrath. Especially Ingrath, I would say. And... Yeah, I can't really answer the second part of that question. I, I can't I can't really pick a main character. I could prob I will probably change that answer as we keep going because there are two at least who have the potential of being like rising up and being the leader of this party. Maybe three. <laughs> I just gave myself a scary idea. The tribunal. Again. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway. Question number whatever this is. Oh my gosh, we're finally moving on to a different question. This is probably going to be an hour-long video. Oh well. So is there a reason that your characters tend to use the same weapons and armor? And this question comes from William McNee, also known as Haggis. And the answer is yes. Um, I was- I, like, Couch continuously gives me ideas. I- I steal ideas from him, I shall say. Uh, ideas that he puts forward in podcasts or has put forward in podcasts for us to use. I'm taking ideas that he has put forward into the community, like, hey, use this thing in your stuff. Um, and the idea of using armor changes to signal a change in the psyche or the dramatic story of a character, the narrative, that idea really stuck with me. And this was back in the days of Fleet Featherstone and like the old Character Crusade podcast. This is why for example, Arden didn't actually pick up and take that set of Dragonbone robes. Partially because- I keep saying partially, I have caught myself. My inner editor is just going, stop using that word! But here we are. Partially because I'm going to use it anyway, whatever. Because he had- um, he hadn't reached the point at which he was ready to uh, get out of his little Dwemer shell yet. That's how I look at that set of armor, it's just like a little, a little shiny shell. He wasn't ready to step out of it yet, because he hadn't gone through the whole thing with Ancano and whatnot. And also because I knew he was going to be in the Archmage armor soon. So I was like, why would I wear this for like a couple episodes and then just shuck it off again? So some of these characters have had a distinct look since day one. For instance, Ingrath. Especially, I think only Ingrath, really. Um... Arden has always had his own aesthetic, which is just big bulky armor on this little tiny dude. <laughs> uh, Kinwa is the only one who actually made her own armor, I think, which is actually the heavy iron armor from Beyond Skyrim Bruma. Um, it suits her very well. I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to change that armor in the future. I know she will be coming across a very important armor set in, in the future. Um... Whether or not she picks it up, I haven't decided yet. There's a lot about her story that is still... She is a very mysterious character. <laughs> She's also a very mysterious character to me. Um, 
Mordgood has kind of had her own aesthetic, that all black kind of Skyrim goth thing going on. Yarnvita. Yarnvita's just kind of. A, a lot of these characters actually have just sort of cobbled together whatever, but haven't really settled into their own uniform it, until recently, like Yarnvita donning Skior's wolf armor. And then Zaytest wearing the Thieves' Guild uniform instead of her other thing because it got shredded. Um, Ingrath does have a non-standard armor set, but he uses it- I use that more as a- uh, an indicator that he is in this other state of mind rather than that it's actually- See, my- I'm gonna point this out here. My- the idea that he uses- or my idea for using, rather, the- the wild hunt armor, that it's silver rather than the brown Bosmer armor, is that is that he has he does this frost he has just innate frost magic and it kind of settles it like like the mask and the little claws and whatnot. All of that is made of frost and it just settles around his already armor. The armor that he has already, rather and turns it kind of this frosty blue because it's a little bit stronger. It's- it's- I- I think of it a little bit like... Stalrim? Temporarily? I guess? That's why that happens. Uh, so yeah, that's why they tend to keep their- their armor the same, because I use armor to signal a change in the character's mind or in the character's situation. Um, or- or to signal massive story plot- story beats, like Arden donning the Archmage's armor. As for weapons, uh, this was partially the same thing um, with the they're only going to change if it, if it makes sense for plot reasons. But it's also partially due to my own martial arts training. I spent the first half of my life-ish uh, up until up until high school, kind of. High school, college. Uh, I spent the first part of my life doing Kempo, which is a combination of, like, open hand and weapons training. Um, I'm a little rusty now, but I do actually know what it's like to be in combat with another person, albeit in the relatively safe environment of a dojo, with a bunch of sparring equipment on. But yes, I've I've actually been kicked across a room before, so... Yeah, I, I know... <laughs> I have some background in combat, which is... It's just a little- a li I get to add little tiny- I say that because I get to li add little tiny bits of realism here and there, um, that I wouldn't otherwise think about, maybe? I've also dabbled in archery, fencing, stage combat, and historical European martial arts, also known as HEMA. HEMA. I'm getting nasally, I apologize. So I have a bit of, like, classic sort of board knowledge as well as more Eastern weapons. And having handled a whole bunch of different weapons, I can say for certainty that I do actually have a preference I can handle long-hafted weapons just fine, like bow staves, which I'm classically trained on, um, spears, dane axes, uh, naginatas, glaives, that kind of thing. I can handle those just fine because they have a lot of leverage, and I'm small, and I like leverage and reach. Um, so I like keeping people at a distance so they can't get in and overpower me. Um, I'm not necessarily- I'm- I'm necessarily- I'm not at all coordinated enough for like nunchucks, nunchaku, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I don't really do as well with one-handed swords like sabers and rapiers because I don't have the leverage. Like, I don't even do well with arming swords because there's not enough leverage. All of which is to say I've given my characters weapons that I think they'd realistically be able to handle, with the exception that I don't know if Zaytest would actually be able to get the power out of her bows that she does. I... I have no way to explain how little tiny Zaytest is a sniper. You need a crap ton of back and shoulder muscle to actually be able to pull a bow. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> but that's why- that's why Ingrath has massive shoulders, because he's an archer and he wields hugely powerful bows. I'm not necessarily sure he's that accurate, at long ranges. I've been trying to keep him um, doing archery at close ranges because after a while he can't really... The reason he's an archer but he only has one eye is because he's also a vampire and a bosmer and so he can hear where he's shooting rather than see where he's shooting. So he can triangulate with his ears rather than his eyes. 
is where that's going. But after a while, the sound gets distorted, obviously, so it's like, how? So I've tried to do that with mixed success. Um, he also uses the axe, which makes sense to me, get close up and personal, because Ingrath is massively strong, and I think he always has been, a little bit. I, I don't really know when he he started using an axe, but it's it's definitely a thing that he's familiar with. It's hard for me to get up close and personal with people without dying, but it should be easier for him. Um, Yarnvita needed a two-handed weapon because of the leverage. I picked a halberd because it's like a war axe, but not. I might switch over to a war axe in the future, we'll see. War axe? Battle axe. Battle axe, I think. Uh, <laughs> which one's the big two-handed one? I, I don't know. But I, Halberd, it gave her a, I gave her a weapon that had a lot of reach. A lot of, of reach, because she's old and needs to leverage. Um, Kinua needed a shield to hide behind, mostly. But also she needed something with more reach for dragons. Thus the spear. Uh, also, she has a spear for symbolic reasons, but I won't get into that because that's uh, that's not something that I want to give away. Um, Arden, in reality, I figure he would have a fighting style that's closer to Geralt of Rivia, where he actually uses both hands on the sword and only lets go to cast spells. But since you can't really do that in this game, I just went with he's actually able to wield a sword one-handed and can cast runes with the other. But yeah, I I fully, in my head, feel like he actually does use both hands on the sword, on the sword rather than just, you know, the way that they fight in Skyrim. You saw him in the bathhouse back in chapter one. He's a scrawny dude. Probably not so scrawny these days, but he started out being a scrawny dude. He would need two hands to wield that sword. Any sword, really. Um, Mordgood uses great swords for that reason. Uh, she's kind of small, but she's also quite strong. So, you know, great swords. She's got leverage. She's got power. She's got an ancestor helping her. It's great. And Zaytest, I think, is the only been... She's been the only one so far who actually changed the style of the weapon that she uses. And it wasn't really something that I emphasized a lot. She just picked up a hatchet and went, hmm, this makes sense. Um, she's also young enough that I'm pretty sure- I, I feel like her her preference for her weapon hasn't really settled yet. She, she switched from double daggers to using dagger and hatchet because she needed more DPS. If we're gonna get- um, if we're gonna get game mechanics with it, she needed a little bit more damage. And she also- it, it's a little bit symbolic of like, she looks up to Ingrath. This is not necessary. this is not something that's- that's a spoiler. She definitely looks up to Ingrath, and since he uses an axe, she uses a tinier version of the axe because she's tiny. So, a hatchet. And also because it's kind of creepy to think about a little tiny Khajiit walking around with a hatchet like, hee hee! I'm going to smash some skulls now. Ooh. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Mordgood might actually go through a similar weapon change in the future because she is actually technically the youngest character. But we'll see. I, I'm still working with her and I don't know for sure yet. I'm, I'm thinking she might switch from Greatsword to, um, to Warhammer at some point. But I haven't really decided yet. So, there's that. Um, actually a lot of- a lot of the stuff that these characters wield are, are for symbolic reasons, but we won't get into that. Um, last question. What mod is blank from? Um, generally I try to be good about answering those questions in the comments as they come up, especially in cases where something weird has happened and it isn't immediately obvious. Um, but I am going to try to put my mod list up on Patreon for free. Don't worry, you don't have to pay to see that one, it's just gonna be a mod list. I just want to consolidate everything there and not have to worry about updating both a Patreon and a website. Save the website for book stuff, that will be fine. That'll be linked in the, in the description along with the main page for the Patreon, the Character Crusade Discord, um, and 
possibly eventually a Dawnbreaker Saga Discord if someday I manage to figure out how that works. But for now, I'm I'm mostly based over on the Character Crusade Discord, and so are a whole bunch of other wonderful, awesome, amazing, creative people that you should, like, if, if you're at all interested in Skyrim roleplay, um, or Fallout roleplay, or The Witcher, a couple of other games get tossed around here and there. Here and there. Um, I know we've had a couple of Assassin's Creed posts in the screenshot recent in the screenshot section recently. So yeah, we're all gamers and creators over there. If you want to come come check us out, I say us, but I am not. I am not anywhere near somebody who is like. I'm not a moderator. I'm not an owner of the server. That's all. That's all Couch's fault. That it's all his doing. So, that's that's where he lives. But yeah, that's 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 where I post all of my my um, all of my uh, when I put the YouTube videos up. That's where I post to let you know that they're up. Unless you're subscribed and have hit the bell icon, ha, I'm doing that thing, uh, then you will hopefully actually be able to see when I put stuff up. I don't know if it actually works, but you can give it a shot. So uh, speaking of Patreon, I would like to thank all of my patrons and honorary patrons. Uh, Bonhart, you know who you are. <laughs> uh, Oh gosh, who are all of my patrons? I think I've mentioned a lot of them, but but yeah, go go join the patron the Patreon if you want to support me. If you want to see who the other patrons are, uh, if you want to get access to a bunch of backstories, behind the scenes stuff, tutorials, which I will hopefully be better at posting at uh, posting in the future. Now that I actually have will have time to do behind the scenes stuff, I plan to do at least one audio tutorial in the future when my voice isn't ex just absolutely dying. Uh, yeah. And, and, to make it better for you, my Patreon is currently pay whatever you want. One dollar or more gets you access to everything. Um, the free posts, I have a couple of them, I think. I'm pretty sure I have the one comic that I ever did up for free. It's an Ingrath comic, it's kinda cool. I, I say it's kind of cool. Obviously I'm biased because he's my own character, but yeah. And I will have the mod page up on the Patreon for free. Or, or the mod... the mod list, rather. Hopefully I'll get that situated and better organized than it is on my website right now because my website is, um, disorganized, shall we say. So yeah, that's how you can support me over on the Patreon. I also write books. I mentioned that a couple times. You can go check them out. I recommend starting from the Tales of Esper Ravenwood and expanding from there. Let me know, by the way. I, I played with this idea. If you want me to do videos about book stuff, like the world building stuff that I mentioned earlier, if you've made it this far, <laughs> first of all, I applaud you because I am barely making it this far. Um, if you want to hear what I'm doing with my world building right now, uh, oh, and I've got- I'm working on another book in the meantime while I'm waiting for, uh, for recording time and things to settle and whatnot. I- I think I'm gonna call it here before my voice dies. Um, so yeah, I will see you probably in the Dawnbreaker saga, probably in Book of Shadows, whichever one comes out first. And I hope to have many more adventures with you in the future, my fellow Dawnbreakers. Have a good day.